Hi everyone, Nicholas Buffett is here from Sunny Cypress and welcome to today's tutorial. This is on the Cambridge IGCSE ICT 0417 or the 0983 course and it is for February, March 2020, 24, paper 2. This is the third and final tutorial for this examination paper and this tutorial focuses on presentation and chart creation and the printing at the end. For the other two tutorials which focus on word processing and databases, have a look in the description of this video and you'll find links to those tutorials there. So let's get started with the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, you're going to create a short presentation about online gaming safety. All slides must have a consistent layout and formatting. Create the presentation of eight slides using the file of that one. Unless otherwise instructed, the slides must display a title and bulleted list. Okay, let's begin. So first of all, I'm going to do right click, new PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to call that March uh, 2024. And this is two, I called it two one. I think it's actually paper two. It doesn't really matter. You don't need to give this a name. And I'm just going to call that underscore pres. I don't normally name these anyway. So there you go. Do that, open up PowerPoint. Let's just drag this up here, it's opened up. And now I'm gonna to go to, from my home, I'm gonna to go to new slide, slides from outline, and just go to my folder, which is on my desktop. Okay, and I want to import the CO2 safety. And I should have eight slides, and I do. And each slide, as we can see, is a title and some content of some kind. Good. First step, click on save. Now we jump back over here again. So we've done number 18. 19, use the master slide to display only the following features. Automatic slide numbers on the top left. The company logo, that logo there, positioned on the top right. Your name, center number, and candidate number. It doesn't say where. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to view, slide master. Now, classic mistake. Many students make, they start modifying the slide master immediately. Wrong. You need to scroll all the way to the top. So you go to the main slide master up here, select that one. Now, what I do to add the slide number, um, the easiest way that I found and students understand a bit easy, I'm going to go to insert. I add a text box. I'm going to add a little text box here. And then with my insertion point blinking in there, I'm going to go to insert and click on my insert slide number icon. And there you go. Next, I now want to put the logo position top right. So from here, I want to insert an image. I can just go to insert, go to pictures, uh, this device and find the file that you want to add. But I'm just gonna show you another way very easily. So from your files here, you can go here, right click, copy. And then just come here, click in your slide and just press paste, control V. There you go. Now, although this overlaps this object here, it doesn't really matter because the outline is not visible, but to play it safe, you can actually just drag that in a little bit like that. So I've added that, I've added it, and now I want to add my details. I'm going to add them at the bottom. I'm going to get rid of these objects at the bottom. I always do, just like I do when I'm doing the reports in databases. Again, I'm going to go to insert, text box. You can see I'm very consistent with this. Um, I always use text boxes and just add my details. Okay, and now I'm gonna go back to view, normal, and there we go. All my slides now have a slide number, top left. Let me just make sure I haven't done a mistake. Um, auto, automatic slide numbers on top left, company logo position top right, your name, center number, and candidate number doesn't say where. Master slide items, appear in the same position on every slide. No items overlap on any slide. Perfect. Right, format slide one so that it's a title slide is applied with no bullets. The title, subtitle, uh, title and subtitle text are center aligned in the middle of the slide. Okay, simple enough. I'm just gonna select that one there. Uh, again, I'm going to use, look for my layout. There you go, slide layouts. I'm going to use the title slide and there you go. They're center aligned in the page, no bullets. Next, delete the slides with the titles Gaming Benefits and Negative Effects of Gaming. So, Gaming Benefits, that one. 
and that one we can see. Yeah. So I'm going to click that one and hold the control button to select that one so I can delete them both at the same time. So I'm now left with six slides. Perfect. You could do them one by one. Number 22, use the data in the file CO2 ratings.csv to create a vertical bar chart to show the number of ratings given to each age category in 2023 only. Display with labels the age categories on the category axis and the number of games on the axis on, on the value axis. Okay, do not display a legend. Label the chart as follows. And then it has a bit more. Okay, so let's begin. So first step, I need to open up that CSV file, CO2 ratings. If I find it. CO2, oh, there it is. So should open up in Excel. There we go. Just zoom that in a bit. Okay, let's have a look at this data. I'm just going to expand these columns, double click between these two. So I've got rating categories. That's these ones. Aha, look at that. So these headings here, the years 2021, 22, and 23, these are numbers. They do this on purpose because, because they are sneaky. So um, I've showed you many times before. I'm going to show you again today. If you simply select all of this data here, so I only want to show for 2023. Now, you could just copy this data, okay, and that data and paste it somewhere else so you've only got those two there. But I'm just going to show you the easiest way. If I was to select this data here and go to insert and create a chart, what you will notice immediately is this one here has been seen as a category, rating categories. Can you see? And it's seen 2021, 2020 as numbers. So it's added it. We don't want that. It's added it because it sees this as text and these as numbers. And that's the same as this. That's text and these are numbers. So the best way and the and, and the easiest way to avoid any mistakes is always make sure that top left corner is blank. So when you're selecting, if that top left corner is empty, even if you have numbers in here, it will not consider them as data because there is no text to accompany as a label. Okay, so I'm just going to select these ones here. Insert. Now I've got a whole tutorial on creating charts in Excel for paper three. Make sure you go have a look at that because creating charts is is pops up in both papers sometimes paper two and paper three and there's a lot of marks so make sure you're comfortable creating charts. So here's my chart. You can see it's only using this data. It's put this information here down here in as a legend. Now I only want for 2023, so I'm going to right click on my chart, select data, and for here I'm just going to remove the ticks for 2021 and 22. Click OK. And there we go. This is for all the age categories, only for 2023. I don't want a legend. So I'm going to click on this plus sign and I'm going to remove the legend. There you go. Okay, let's see what else it wants me to do. So I've done that. Um, display with labels, the age categories on the category axis, we've got that, and the number of games on the value axis. Well, we've done that. Do not display a legend. We've done that as well. Label the chart as follows. So we want title is rating of games in 2023. So I'm just going to double click on that, select it, paste. And then I want a category axis title. I don't currently have one. So I'm just going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to put axis titles. Here's my category one. I'm just going to copy over. It should be age category. So that should be age category. And I don't want a Y axis one. So I'm just going to select that and press delete. So it doesn't want that one. OK, next it wants display only the data values along the top of each bar and then format the value axis scale to display zero for the minimum. 560 for the maximum and 70 for the increments. OK, so display only the data values along the top. Let's go back. So first of all, again, I'm going to click on the plus sign. On my chart, I'm going to say display values it should be data labels. There we go. 
And can you see, as soon as I put that there, it displays those values for me. If I wanted different values in or on top, outside, inside, you can choose the one that you want, but it says here, just outside. So there you go, along the top of each bar. So that's along the top. Now I want to format my value axis. So I'm going to select it by clicking on it, right click on it, format axis. Let's just get rid of that part there. Go away. All right, let me just get rid of that plus sign. All right, so right click on that, format axis. And now I want the minimum value to be zero, the maximum to be 560, and I want the major units to be 70. So increments of 70. And let's have a look. 0, 70, starts from zero, goes to 560. Perfect. Okay, I can close that. Let's go back. Then it says place the chart to the left of the bullets on the slide with the title game ratings. Make sure that no words in the chart are split. All data and labels are fully visible. The chart and its contents do not over, overlap slide items. Okay. So I'm going to just select this. Control C to copy. Go to my PowerPoint. Go to the game ratings. There it is. And I want it to the left. So I'm just going to shuffle this over here to the right and paste my table, my chart there. Now the chart is really the important thing here where there's a lot of marks in here. So I'm just gonna make that nice and big. There we go, so it's visible. And I'm going to make sure nothing, all of this text is visible. It doesn't matter if it's text wrapping, that's absolutely fine. It didn't say you can't text wrap, it just doesn't want words split. So let's say the word officially to be cut O-F-F-I-C and then the, the I-A-L-L-Y on the next line, okay? So you don't want any truncating there. My chart is fully visible. Let's just make that just a little bit bigger. Okay, perfect. And what else is one? All data and labels are fully visible. The chart and its contents do not overlap slide items. Great, let's go to number 27. On the slide with the title game ratings, format the text age classifications so that when clicked, it opens a document with the file name CO2 categories. Take a screenshot to show that the text links to the correct file. Place this in your evidence document. Okay, so the age classifications. So this is the same one here. So age, there it is, age classification. I'm going to select that. I'm going to right click on it, link, and there you go, existing file or web page. So I want to click to CO2 categories. Not very good at finding the files, am I? There it is there. So select that and click OK. And that's now being linked, you see? So what now I need to do is make a screenshot. I'm going to right click on that, edit the link. <clears throat> and I'm going to take a screenshot which displays all of that. So let's just do it new. And I'm going to take a screenshot. So it displays the text which I've selected. It has the text here, but also here it shows what it's linking to. And I'm going to put that in evidence number 27. Does that fit? No, let's move that down. Good. Just make it a tad smaller, not too small. There we go. Save. Now I can go back to my question paper. Add the following text as presenter speaker notes to the slide with the title game ratings. So the same one. So I'm going to select that text. If you're going to type this out, which you probably have to, make sure you do everything um, spelt correctly. So I'm going to go back to here, close that. At the bottom, you can see click to add notes. I'm going to paste that there. And then it says print only this slide as presenter speaker notes. So how do we do this? File, print. I'm going to print only the current slide, which I'm looking at. So instead of all slides, just print current slide. And then instead of full pages, I want notes page. And there you go. It's going to print me this slide here, okay, with everything I want and the notes there. And I will simply click on print to print to my printer. All right. Then save the presentation, print slides one, two, three, and four only as handouts in portrait orientation with two slides on each page and with each slide filling half the page. So pages one, two, three, and four. So again, I'm gonna to go to file print. This time I'm going to, so current slide, I'm gonna say print all slides, but now I'm going to choose 
one, two, four. Or I could do one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four. It's okay if it's only four pages, but if it's more, then that's a bit annoying. Okay, and if I look here, I now need to print notes, not a notes page, two slides a page, and I should have two pages. There they are. Okay, and then I simply click on print. So that's done. Print your evidence document. Make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number appear on every page of your evidence document. Save your evidence document. Print your evidence document. We have finished. So not too sure right now how long this video is going to be, but you can see that was a really, really packed paper. Technical um, requirements, not that great. You could save this, and I suggest to you save this as an Excel file. I'll do your major chart. Just do this. Do a quick file. Um, save as. Remember, click on more options. Always click on more options. And just either call this chart. Click save. And then just close. In case you need to make some changes and you need to go back to that chart, instead of having to regenerate it again, you've got it saved. Wow, what a paper. Quite packed. Not too technical, but very, very demanding on your time. And if you do have any time left over at the end, make sure you check your printouts with the question paper. Don't look at the screen. You turn your screen off and you make sure everything that's on the question paper you can see in the printouts. OK, well, there you go. That's it. The first 2024 paper a tutorial completed. If you like this video, if you learned something new, and new, you know the drill. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you again in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.